result more intriguingly than the main event itself. IBF flight welterweight world champion Paul uh, Malignaghi defends his title against Lovemore and Do on the undercard. And if both Malignaghi and Haddon are successful at the weekend, the pair would likely meet in the autumn at Madison Square Garden. We can cross live now to Manchester where we can speak to Paul Malignaghi. He's with promoter Frank Maloney. Uh, Paul, we're all talking about you versus Ricky Hatton uh, as a prospective fight. I suppose important though to say first and foremost, you've got a job to do against Lovemore and Do at the weekend. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure if I heard the question, but uh, I, I know I'm fighting one more and do this weekend. Uh, everybody's looking forward to the, to the big show, and uh, obviously Ricky is the show, but uh, I'm looking forward to putting a little razzle-dazzle on myself, and uh, what more and do is a guy I can't take lightly. I've beaten him the first time. Uh, he does bring a fast pace, but at the end of the day, uh, it's a little bit too much, uh, too much style for a love more and do and Paulie Malinaji. Steve Bunce here. Paulie, now, last year when you beat Endu, he wasn't very gracious, was he? He didn't give you many plaudits. In fact, he was, he's been whinging and moaning ever since. Do you feel yes. you've still got something to prove? And this is why, the, the, this is the only probably positive thing about this rematch, is that I get to teach this guy a lesson again. I'm going to pick up from round 13, basically, and throw him a thorough beating again. Because this guy only only complained. I mean, if you get beat and you want a rematch, it's fine. You complain, uh, you can say, okay, I, I, I got beat by the better man, but I'd like another shot. That's, that would be gracious because he was dominated. He wasn't only beaten. Yet, he's always complaining, saying this one screwed him and this one jobbed him and this happened and that happened and, and he would knock me out. First of all, this guy says he's going to knock everybody out. He can't even punch. But uh, second of all, a thorough beating is what he's going to receive the, what he received the first time, and a thorough beating is what he's going to receive on Saturday night. And one thing's for sure, you, you can expect him to, hear, to make plenty of excuses again on Saturday night. After I beat him, this guy is such a sore loser, you can expect to hear more excuses from him. But at least now I know his character. Well, let me ask you this. Now, I know that a fighter shouldn't take his eye off of his, his early fights, but are you, in the back of your head, are you looking at Ricky Hatton and thinking, Madison Square Garden, hometown, 20,000 Italian New Yorkers, you must be thinking about it somewhere, Paulie. Yeah, yeah, obviously the thought has always crossed my mind, which it's only natural, but at the end of the day, you can get caught overlooking somebody. And, you know, we saw Junior Witter two weeks ago, who was a phenomenal fighter, get beat by another good fighter in Timothy Bradley, only because he overlooked him, I think. You know, uh, Bradley put on a great performance, and he, I always felt he was going to put in a, up a tough fight, but I didn't think he would beat Witter. And I think maybe Witter got caught up looking ahead too much. And uh, if that can happen to you. You know, on this level, we're all, we all have world championships, and people that are coming to fight for world championships are coming in, and they're going to put up the fight of their life each and every time. So you have to be ready for that. You have to be ready for the ultimate effort from the challenger each time. So as a champion, you can't overlook anybody. I think it's Andy again. Um, from your point of view, is this... Obviously a fantastic event this weekend. Is this chance, though, to have a look at potentially the two best fighters in this division up close and see if we can get a match together come the autumn, in your opinion? Uh, can you repeat that again? Sorry. No, asking Frank if that's OK, Paulie, I just wonder if he sees this as a chance to look at both you and Ricky Haddon up close and see if this is a fight that he would like to put on in the autumn. I, yeah, I think it's a great opportunity. I mean, you know, we've sold 55,000 tickets for this, and I listened to what Steve has been saying, and I sort of agree with Steve. And, you know, Steve's saying about Madison Square Garden, the spiritual home of boxing. But why go to America when Ricky Hatton can sell 55,000 seats? I mean, if he fights this guy here in Britain, I think we could sell 60,000, 70,000. And you just couldn't beat that. So I'm going to try and talk the Hattons into staying in, in Britain and fighting. I mean, it's a much better fight. And I'm sure this guy would love to come over and fight because he just loves the razzmatazz, he loves the crowd. You know, he's one of the most colourful fighters that I've met and I've been with him for all this week. And I've got to say, he talks a great fight. He knows how to hype a fight up. He knows exactly what you guys want. And it's great to work with someone. And the good thing is he can actually fight. <laughs> Frankie, if you're still there... Uh, in fact, I'm going to speak to Paulie now. Paulie, are you still there, mate? Paulie, can you still hear us? I think, I think we've actually somebody's just not put the 10p in the slot, have they? We've just 20 p these days. To lose, lose uh, it, but we will get them. It would be interesting to find out if Malinaghi, if we can maybe call him up or get him on his mobile, and um, we can pass it on. It'd be interesting to find out if he'd be prepared to fight here mm. and surrender, a, a, you know, 15,000, 20,000. No, very new. That's, that, that, that would be brilliant. Millennium Stadium is made in the shade. There's a boxing audience down there. Paulie, Paulie, are you there? Yeah. Yes, Paul I'm here, guys. I'm yeah, here. Paulie, can I ask you this? Would you be prepared to fight Ricky Hatton in Britain in front of 50 or 60,000 people? Is that something you would consider doing? Listen, if the money I, I, I don't. I, 
I, I, yeah, if the money's right, I never, I never say never. Listen, uh, anything is always possible. Uh, I'm, I'm always looking for the big fights. I love big crowds. I love huge crowds. And obviously, we've, uh, Ricky's proven here that he draws an amazing amount of people to, to his fights. You know, uh, I would defend the title anywhere. You know, uh, and I, and I would, you know, be willing to fight Ricky anywhere as long as the money's right. But having said that, uh, I think, uh, uh, you know, I don't want to go against Frank here. As Frank wants to make a, a big event here in, the, in Britain, and I think the fans here in Britain are great. I prefer it in the, in the U.S., but at the end of the day, if it comes to Britain, you know, I never say never. Steve, you know there's a few Italians you live in Cardiff anyway. Listen, yeah, Frank, you have to bring them over, Steve. Frankie, there's more than enough yes. Italians live down there. And, and as Paulie says, if the money's right and the sums would add up, Frankie, we could make this happen at the Millennium, couldn't we? Well, you know, at the press conference today, Golden Boy talks about going to America. But, you know, you look at it. 50, I mean, no fight in America has, grow, has drawn 55,000 live gate. I don't know when that last happened. You know, so I think, you know, Britain is a great place for boxing if you've got the right fights. You know, Kalzaki drew 30,000, Ricky's drawn 55,000. Ricky and Paul here could draw 80,000 plus. You know, these two guys know how to set a fight and they both can fight. And they both today claim that they're both, at the, they're both the best in the light welterweight division. So it would be a great fight. Fantastic. And what about uh, Paulie? The size of the crowd, 55,000, the biggest that you've fought in front of. Are you getting excited about that? Oh, I'm very excited. The bigger the crowd, the more excited I get. Uh, I love being the center of attention. I, love, I thrive on opportunities like this. And I'm a performer at heart, you know, and uh, you give me a stage and, I, and I'll perform for you. And this is a very big stage. This is the biggest stage of my career, being able to fight in front of all these people. And uh, it's also not only the biggest crowd, but it's also a new audience for me because I've never fought across the pond as a pro. So uh, put, you put all this together and uh, it makes it a very exciting time for me. And uh, I'm going to put all the razzmatazz in there, believe me. Raz I'm going to razzle you guys, I'm going to dazzle you guys, and you're going to see the best light walk away in the world on Saturday night. Fantastic. Paulie, you said you like being the centre of attention. Do you think you can be the centre of attention in Ricky Hatton's back garden? 55,000 there to see him. Can you steal the show? Well, I'm not going to say, or, or I'm not going to say I will or won't steal the show, but I will say that for the time I'm in the ring, I'll definitely be the center of attention. And regardless of what happens in Ricky's fight, people will still go home talking about me. They'll go home talking about Ricky always because they're coming out for Ricky. But people will go home talking about Paulie Malinaji also. And uh, when they do that, I know I've done my job. Paulie, I know that other very, very famous Italian boxer, uh, Robert De Niro, who of course played uh, Jake LaMotta. He went to Sicily to put on loads of weight so he could play the fat Jake LaMotta. Now, you've done the same thing. You've been in Sicily. Is your weight okay, my friend? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, everything's good, man. <laughs> it was tough, I gotta say. You know, it's tough to say no to that good food in Sicily. But uh, my weight is okay. Uh, my, I'm, I'm sharp. I feel ready to go. And uh, uh, my time, you know, I had a great camp in the states and also in Sicily. And everything's great, man. Everything's really excellent. And I'm ready for the fight Saturday. Fantastic, Paulie. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate your time. Enjoy the weekend. And Frank, thank you. Sorry, thank you very much to Frank Maloney as See well. You. See you, Frankie. Thanks. No. Oh. We should forget Frank. Almost forgot Frank. Well, no, no, yeah. listen. listen you you, never you can never forget Frank. You know, he's um, he knows how to put a show on. He knows how to he knows how to razzle and dazzle, just like Paulie does. Those two, I can see those two forging an absolute. They're, 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 they're two partners. I was going to say complete contrast, Steve. <laughs> Paulie, you'd probably after a, a, a post-match conference, you'd be wouldn't be able to shut him up, would Absolutely. you? Absolutely, and, and, and that's what you need <laughs> yeah. because the fight, the fight isn't just the fight. Yeah. The fights are the component of a big fight. It's the selling, it's the marketing, it's the way the posters are made, it's the program, it's the programs leading up to it, it's the press, and then it's the after-fight stuff. It's all one big package, and that's what Ricky Hatton does so well. Joe Kalzaki does well. David Hay does well. Paulie Malinaghi does well. Oscar De La Hoya does well. Floyd Mayweather does well, and Miguel Angel Cotto does dismally. <laughs> and it's that simple. There's a theme emerging here, isn't there? There is a theme emerging here, yeah, trust me. <laughs>